I'm Cape Jewel, and this is Comic Smack. Your weekly, daily, all the time, anytime comic show where I give you your fix of everything you need to know from the world of comic books and superheroes. And on today's show, we're taking a closer look at Civil War, issue number five. The battle lines have been drawn, and the heroes are finally ready to let fisticuffs do the talking. What'll happen next? Let's hop on in together and find out, shall we? So, the comic opens on an actually pretty funny note, which took me off guard. We see a bunch of people taking a helicopter tour of New York, complaining about not seeing any superheroes, before Drax the Destroyer comes smashing into their window. Note to self, do not take helicopter tour when I go to New York in October. From there, we transition on over to the big battle, and what a scene it is. The only problem is that in the first of many Bendis don't care, Bendis don't give a fuck moments here, certain heroes are on the wrong side. In fact, I wrote it down, so let's go over it. First off, we have Old Man Logan, who is fighting for Iron Man, even though Storm and the rest of the extraordinary X-Men are pledging Captain Marvel. Luke Cage is also on Tony's team, despite the fact in his own book he swore to be a neutral party and then was later forced to join Carol's team in order to save Iron Fist. Captain America Steve Rogers is also shown to be on Tony's team, even though in every other book so far he's been working side by side with Carol. But hey, at least the fight itself is cool, right? I mean, we've waited seven issues issues to get here, and yeah, it's pretty cool to see these heroes throw down, but it gets less and less cool when you realize Bendis stops the bigger moments of the battle so he can write his favorite characters, even when they have no real hooks in the actual story. Case in point, Luke Cage versus Blue Marvel. Cool fight, does nothing to move the story forward. Magic not only defeats Sam Wilson, but embarrasses him by teleporting him all the way to Hollywood. Again, funny gag, I enjoyed it, but what does it do, Basil? Same goes for Iron Man and Captain America wondering aloud why the Guardians are helping Carol of all people when Quill knows Tony almost as well. FYI, if you read the Guardians tie-in, which Bendis also wrote, you find out the only reason the Guardians of the Galaxy are on Captain Marvel's side in the first place is that she just kinda sorta got in contact with him first. Meaning that if Iron Man was the first to place a call, they would be fighting on his team right now. But by far the strangest little aside has to be the one had between Miles Morales, Spider-Man, and Flash Thompson Venom, making this the first time these two characters have actually ever met before. Miles mentions how much he hates symbiotes, FYI, a symbiote killed his mom in the Ultimate Universe, so wait, does that mean Miles remembers that sort of stuff and holds a grudge? Flash, in a very out-of-character moment, gets very condescending towards Miles, saying that he doesn't deserve to be Spider-Man, he should know because Spider-Man is his favorite. Yes, I know, a lot of people are still very crappy about Miles as Spider-Man for very superficial reasons, but please, please, Bendis, don't make Flash talk Thompson, one of those people we like Flash, and we'd like to continue liking him, please, if you don't mind. Now, so far, Iron Man's team has more warm bodies on it, and because of it, they have the advantage. Why, his group even ends up destroying the Milano in the fight. But things change the other direction when the Inhuman Royals come to back up Carol. What's shocking is that even though the Inhumans have come to join the fight, they made Ulysses, you know, the person everyone's fighting about, stay behind and guard the base. This, unsurprisingly, ends up upsetting the kid, and because his power are based on emotion, he ends up causing everyone to have another giant shared vision of the future, only this time it shows Miles Morales having killed Captain America. Which seems to be a pretty shocking possible future, but then you're reminded how inaccurate Ulysses' visions have been made out to be, and also the fact that this Captain America still believes himself to be a Hydra sleeper agent, so when you take all those factors into account, it gets a lot less shocking. As the comic ends, a shocked Captain Marvel attempts to arrest Spider-Man in front of everyone else. Civil War number 5 was yet another frustrating issue in what is quickly becoming one of the most frustrating events I've read in a very long time. There are shreds of good ideas in here though, don't get me wrong. The fight itself is cool, it's just that everything else about the battle annoys me. Bendis continually stops the important story fight between Iron Man and Captain Marvel so we can have little asides with characters that he enjoys writing. Which I might have been okay with if we haven't already been following this story for seven issues including the Zero and Free comic book day issue. I would like to see some more movement from the story, and we didn't get it. Ulysses not being allowed to take part in the fight that's all about him is a clever idea, but it's never explored in depth. Spider-Man possibly killing Cap is shocking, so much 
much to the point I wonder why they even had to do this stuff with Thanos and the Hulk. If they had started the whole story here, I feel it would have started much stronger with a much bigger pow. In short, it's a mess. A pretty mess thanks to the art. Then again, the art is also the reason that we're not going to finish this story until the end of 2016, but good art can only get you so far. At the end of the day, this comic ends up only getting a 6 from me, which I think is fair. Hey everyone, thanks so much for watching my newest video. I hope you enjoyed it, and while you're here, why not check out another video I have on offer, or maybe if you're feeling in a supportive mood, you want to like or subscribe. And if you want to support the creation of more videos just like this one, then please, by all means, check out the Cape Joel Patreon. A little bit goes a very long way, and I will see you all next time.